And, and speaking of being spooked by things, we've had the Banking Royal Commission at the moment and changes to lending in out of your super fund and those sorts of things. Do you think that's impacted the market? Obviously it's impacted the market, but what's the long-term effects of this or do we not know? Are we just having a, a stab in the dark or are we perhaps let's explore that for a moment? Yeah, well, I'm just having an impact, although, again, it's not as big an impact as being stated in media. Media would have us believe no one can get a loan anymore. Um, most people are actually getting the loans that they're applying for. It's just taking longer because mm -hmm. the banks are making them jump through greater hoops. So everything's taking twice as long as it used to take, but which kind of affects settlements, I think, perhaps extensions are, have to be applied for. Um, the banks have overreacted, I think, to um, the Banking Royal Commission and to the dictates of APRA. And will we see a correction of that, do you think? There has to be a yeah. correction because the banks have to write their multi-billion dollar profits, otherwise their shareholders are going to get very edgy. Um, and <coughs> they, they can't do that unless they lend money to people to buy houses. So they've gone too far. Um, the Reserve Bank is telling them that right now, in fact, that you know, you've, you've gone too far mm. and you've got to adjust back a little bit. Yeah, can you talk about that? Because I know the Reserve Bank made some noise about that just recently. Um, well, the Reserve Bank is aware that um, there can be an impact, there may, might be an impact on property market and the economy if the current situation continues. Um, we've seen it before though, with, you know, APRA has brought down restrictions of various sorts over the last two to three years. There's been a period of adjustment where the banks have gone, okay, and they've adjusted back, but quite quickly they've got back to normal. Um, but they've got to lend money because they've got to keep their shareholders and happy. And it's actually a very competitive environment. They're not just competing with each other with the major banks, they're competing with the second and third tier mm -hmm. lenders. And more and more borrowers are realising that um, we can get a better and faster deal if we go to some of the second tier uh, lenders. And uh, so the banks are actually going to lose market share increasingly to the smaller lenders if they don't um, see some sense. Um, and Terry, there's also a lot of um, you know, media hype at the moment about interest rates going up. What are your thoughts on what's going to happen in that kind of space with interest rates over the next little bit? Well, in terms of the, the official cash rate, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. The Reserve Bank's made that really clear. Most of the forecasters say it's not going to change next year, maybe the year after. Of course, it's become a little bit irrelevant because the, the lenders are, are running their own race. They're, they're not just uh, reacting to the Reserve Bank's official rate anymore. And we've seen one very, very small increase from the major banks recently, and that was overhyped by media. It was very, very small and very minor. Um, I don't think we're gonna see any major changes there, whatever changes. You know, we'd have to see like four or five interest rate rises before it started to have a negative impact. I think it's, it's um, overrated. If you look at, um, the times in recent history where Australia's had a genuine national property boom, which is actually very rare in this country. We have all these different markets doing their own thing, like we do right now. But when we've had um, true national uh, property booms, they've all happened in times of high interest rates and rising oh, interest oh. rates. Like the late 80s and the early part of this century, the early part of this century, interest rates were much higher than they were now, and they were rising, but the rises didn't quell the boom. Um, well, those ones were trying to probably slow the economy down because the Well, that's right. Well, growing interest rates were economy. rising for a reason. Yes. And the reason was that the economy was strong, people were well employed, secure on their jobs, <clears> and they were confident. Um, so, rising interest rates is actually quite a positive thing for property markets, I think. Well, I actually agree with you. I was just interested too, though, with occasionally at Triple Zero Property, we're sitting down and we're talking with a client, and occasionally a question comes up what about the rest of the world? I read that. Australia is the most expensive place in the world to, to live in. I mean, what are your thoughts? Can you comment on that? Oh, another piece of media hype. We, we could spend the next several hours talking about it, couldn't we? Um, there, there are some reports that come out, like there's one called Demographia. It comes out once oh, a year yes. and it says Australia is the most unaffordable property in the world, but it only compares Australia with six other nations. There's over 200 nations out there that don't make their report, including there's nowhere in Europe in the report, for example. I don't know if anyone's been to Paris recently, but <laughs> real estate's pretty more expensive there than Sydney, believe me. Um, lots of places as expensive or more so than our most expensive markets. And our market is so different from the US too, because we're predominantly, most people live in major capital cities yeah. or, or within that within a certain time frame, whereas US market is very much a regional market as well, with lots of regional cities, and, and obviously their lending environment's very different. Yeah. 
Yeah, we are, we are a very, very different country. Um, but if you leave Sydney out of the argument for a while, Australia is not a particularly unaffordable market. There's lots of affordable places in most of our capital cities, but particularly in, in regional areas within striking distance of our major cities. Um, that's one of the things driving regional Victoria's markets at the moment, that um, you can buy at a fraction of the price in a, a hill change town just outside Melbourne and still have a job in Melbourne because the connections are so strong. There's a really interesting article in a Sydney paper that said, I can't believe how expensive land prices are now. It's so unaffordable. I can never see how my kids could ever buy a block of land. That was written in 1972. It's pretty much the same. Yeah. We hear the same thing over and over again. We do. No, no, I, saw, I saw an article from one of the Sydney papers saying the same thing. Our kids have been priced out of the market. They're doomed to a lifetime of renting. And that was in the 1980s, that article. So we're still having the same conversation. Mm -hmm the situation doesn't change. And the reason is because the debate is so poor. The debate in media keeps focusing on furfies like negative gearing instead of zeroing in on the real issues, which is really, I think, the, the high cost of building new dwellings in this country. And that's high because all three levels of government treat the housing industry as a cash cow and they all milk it for revenue. And when they do that, the price of producing the product goes up. And um, there's research out there that shows that about 40% of the cost of new house and land package on average in Australia is government taxes, fees and charges. And if you eliminated that, we'd have very affordable new dwellings, but they're not going to do That's that. That's never going to happen. No. No, no, they're much it's rather... It's like getting rid of stamp duty, isn't it? <laughs> it's like an episode of Yes Minister, I'm sure you've all seen it, um, but there was an episode where um, Sir Humphrey Appleby demonstrated how you gave the impression as politicians of doing something meaningful while changing nothing, and that is, you hold an inquiry, and at the end of the inquiry, you For recommend a you recommend a Royal Commission. At the end of that, you find an unpopular minority to scapegoat for the problem. Now, Australia at the federal level has done that on the issue of housing affordability. They had an inquiry, then they had another inquiry, and at the end of it, they decided to scapegoat foreign investors. And so they had a big clamp down on foreign investors, but the median price for a house in Sydney is still above a million dollars and it's still 800,000 in Melbourne. Nothing's changed because that wasn't the problem. Foreign investors weren't the problem. The Sorry. problem is the, the politicians themselves who are trying to point the finger of blame everywhere else.